If you have an AP exam that's coming up and you haven't started studying, then welcome to this video. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be providing some last minute study tips for your upcoming AP exams. So I'm just gonna start off this video by providing my main four tips since that's probably why you're here and I can save you a bit of time. So if this is all you're here for, that's fine. But for the rest of the video, I will be explaining these further and going into more detail. And I will also provide some additional tips to help ensure your success. So my first tip is pretty obvious, but it's to check the College Board website and make sure you understand how your AP tests will be administered and know how long you have to complete your exams and just things like that. My second tip is a little specific to the 2020 exams since they are going to be open note, but it's to choose between digital and handwritten notes. And ultimately, this is just going to make it a lot easier and more efficient to find your notes during the exam. It's really necessary that you understand this third tip and it's to be confident that you already know most of the information so with that said, you should only revise the content that you're not that comfortable with or that you don't fully understand. And finally, my fourth tip is to take practice tests because this is what's going to be closest to the actual exam. And I would personally recommend taking no more than three exams because it's honestly just going to overwhelm you. So those are my four main tips. If you'd like to continue watching, I'll be explaining the rationale behind these and just providing more additional tips to help you do well on your exams. So I don't think I need to go in depth about the first tip, so I'm just gonna skip that. So my second tip is to decide between digital and handwritten or hard copy notes. It's really important to choose one because it'll make it a lot easier to find your information. If you have a mix of both, it's gonna be really hard to find a certain piece of information, you're not going to remember whether it's digital or you have a hard copy of it. I mean, the last thing you want to do is waste a bunch of time looking through your notes when you could be using that time to actually write your exam. So now I'm just going to explain the pros and cons of the digital and handwritten or hard copy notes. My pros with digital notes is that if you're using a device that has a split screen option, then you can have your test on one side and then you can have your notes on the other side and you can use control F to easily find your information. There aren't really any major cons with this. I think the only con would be that if you are planning to look up information on the internet during the exam, it might take up a lot of time because to be honest with Google, when you search up a question, it never actually gives you the answer you're looking for. Now onto handwritten or hard copy notes. My pros with these is, at least for me personally, most of the notes I've taken in class are handwritten. So I think that typing them up is super redundant and it takes up a lot of time, especially since we are on a time crunch here. It can be possibly easier to organize information. I feel like with handwritten notes, there's more options and there's more variety of ways that you can organize your information. One con with this is that it can be like really hard to find information, especially since you don't have the control F tool and just a bunch of papers lying around on a desk can be super messy and super unorganized, which may make it really hard to find information. My third tip was about being confident that you already know most of the information. I mean, if you think about it, you have been taking an AP class for almost an entire year. So I feel like at the very least, you at least retain at least 50% of the material. Even if you don't think you do, you probably do know most of the information. So I would really only revise concepts that you're not really familiar with or that you struggle with a little. There are a ton of resources that you can use. If you go on Google and if you just search up the information, there are numerous free study guides out there that you can easily learn from. There are YouTube videos. You can also ask your teacher if you want to. You know, there's just so many resources. And my last tip would be to take a bunch of practice exams. That way you can actually practice for the actual exam. And I would recommend taking one before you start studying and then two to three after you finish studying. That way you can assess your weak areas and work on those. And also remember not to overwhelm yourself by taking a bunch of practice exams because you're probably going to end up getting the same exact results or even a lower score, which is only going to demotivate you and give you less confidence which is exactly what you don't want just days before an exam. 
and if you haven't started studying for your exam which i mean is completely relatable i think the best tip would just be to not overwhelm yourself if you're like studying the night before because i think it's going to make you really nervous and i think on the day of the test you're also going to be super nervous so i think it's important that you stay confident you believe in yourself and also, even if you don't understand some of the material, I think it's going to be okay because you most likely won't be tested on that material. And even if you are, then you should just answer the question to the best of your ability and you're probably going to do fine. And I know that for some of the exams, even if you don't answer the question completely or if you don't finish your exam, I know that it's still possible to get a 4 or a 5. Okay, so now I'm going to give you some tips specifically on the AP World History exam. My number one tip would be to make a timeline for sure and just like write down all the important events that happened, like the very important events like the Protestant Reformation or the late 1400s when the Europeans went into the Americas, like the Mongols, you know, when the Ottomans ruled and just like note down all those important dates. And this is really going to help you with the contextualization point on the DBQ because you're going to have your timeline right in front of you and then you can just quickly write a couple of notes on like what happened during that time period. Another tip is to focus on continuity and change slash big picture stuff. I think this would help you with the outside evidence point. I think just know like the main ideas and how a certain event led to another. I think one great example would be enlightenment ideals because this changed government structure and people wanted to start limiting the monarchy and equality more was more emphasized and we can see this happening throughout the world. We can see it with Peter the Great in Russia. We can see it with King Louis the 14th I believe in France. Also, keep your contextualization as short as possible. Don't make it like a sentence, but make it like three to four sentences. You don't need to make it like 10 sentences. That would be super unnecessary. Also, I think that if you feel pretty weak on like the analyzing the documents point or the sourcing point, then it might be a good idea to source an additional document or to analyze an additional document. That way, if one of your source things or one of your documents don't get counted, then you have the other one as a backup. Also, I think it's important that you don't focus on the complexity point that much because that's really hard to get. So instead of trying to focus on the complexity point, I think you should focus on trying to get another more easily achievable point. Like if you struggle with sourcing, which I know I definitely do, try focusing more on getting the sourcing point rather than the complexity point. So those are basically all the tips I have for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys later. Bye!